A reading from John chapter 10. I tell you the truth. A man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Dear friends in Grace Hill in Northern Ireland, Today we have a virtual pulpit swap. Sister Sarah comes to Ockbrook and Leicester, and I have the privilege of being with you in Grace Hill. I have been with you in the past, and it has always been a pleasure to share with you in fellowship. And also I would prefer to meet with you in person. Doing it in a virtual space is still better than nothing. Many people who live outside of Ireland have the following image in their mind. It is a lush green country with endless beauty, with a beautiful coastline, with pastures and grazing sheep, and with people who offer great hospitality, although at the moment this is limited simply by the pressure of a virus. And actually, Having come to your island confirmed to me that this is not only an image in one's mind, but it is reality. It is the ideal backdrop for our suggested Bible reading for today about a shepherd and his sheep. We can see this image. The shepherd is looking after his sheep which are grazing. When evening comes, he would guide them into a sheep pen, a safe space, an area surrounded by a stone wall with a small opening. And when all the sheep are inside, he would sit across this opening so that he would protect those inside and would only let them out once it's safe to do so. In our story, Jesus compares himself with the gate and with the shepherd. And as the shepherd would sit across the opening in the wall, he, in his person, forms the gate. I would like to mainly focus on one element of this wonderful story, the voice of the shepherd. Often, when I ring people on the telephone, I do not say my name straight away. And in most cases, People identify my voice straight away. Well, maybe it's not so difficult to pick out a German accent. I'm saying this because a voice is so much more than a written word. A voice is unique to the extent that many companies use your voice to identify you. When you ring them, Rather, going through a lengthy identification process, all you have to do is saying, my voice is my password. The voice is as unique as a fingerprint. There are never two the same. 
Listening to a living voice is so much more than reading the same as text. Just imagine the vast difference between reading Shakespeare and listening to an actor reading or even performing the same. Or think of a loved one who may have died some time ago, but his or her voice might still be in your head. A voice is unique and distinct. When we hear that Jesus, as the Good Shepherd, is calling everyone by name, using his voice, then it means the Christian faith is not about an abstract idea, it's not about a philosophical construction, it's about a personal relationship. Christian faith is about relating to the creator of the universe, or, shall I turn it around, the creator of the universe relating to us, reaching out to us. This is mind-boggling. Of course, there are many other voices around us. Voices of commerce and advertising, for instance, promising life to the full, promising joy and satisfaction, but in reality robbing you of a life that will not perish. If you speak to anyone who is close to the end of their life and you ask them what makes them happy, they will always talk about relationships and how in the presence of certain people they felt blessed. They will hardly talk about stuff they have accumulated. And how important good relationships to people are, this is what we realize in particular now, during the time of isolation. How much more will the author of life, whom we can see in Jesus, give this eternal fulfillment? You might ask the question, how can we recognize his voice amidst all the other voices? Well, in the same way as you get to know the voice of a person, by spending time with him in prayer, by listening to her voice through the Bible, by communicating with those who have the same ambition, to discover that they are wild to God. The last detail of our story, verse 4. He, the shepherd, goes ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. The shepherd of our souls is not an arbitrary God, removed from our world, directing things from a distance. He walked our walk through isolation, pressure, crisis and even death. Whatever struggles we face, he has faced. Whatever dark walk we have to walk, he has walked it too. Can I suggest, this is a shepherd we can follow and a voice we can listen to. May God bless you all. Amen. A prayer. God, you look after us as a shepherd looks after his sheep. We thank you for your care. Help us to look after each other in our families, in our communities and across the world, in particular now, in this time of crisis. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.